Hello, seventh graders. Today we're going to explore a little bit of our vocabulary that will be new during our evolution unit. First, it is important that we all understand that we're oh, on the same to, page sorry. with the term that's, I, I just that, that's okay, with the term that we've been using for quite a while, um, just to make sure we're all operating with the same definition. A species is a group of similar organisms that can mate with each other and produce fertile offspring, like house cats, for example, would be members of the same species, Felis domesticus. And our next word is the vocabulary word ad adaptation. Adaptation, it's a, it's a characteristic or a trait that can help an organism survive and reproduce. I got this uh, image because I wanted to show there's so many adaptations on something like this bird of prey that would help it be a successful living thing. What's your favorite adaptation on this raptor? Known Me? As the eagle, Mrs. Beniski. I like the hook like beak. What about you? I love those talons. And uh, then a new term, natural selection. We're going to be spending a lot of time unpacking this term over the course of our unit. And simply put, natural selection is when a favorable trait helps a species survive so that they can live long enough to reproduce and pass on that same favorable trait to their offspring. Boy, I see some other vocabulary words right within this definition. So we're talking about traits that help the organism be successful, they're favorable, and when you are can survive, then you can reproduce and pass. Overproduction. Now this is a, a term used to describe one of the things that will affect whether or not a species is able to survive. So one of the concepts that, one of the principles that helps uh, helps us understand natural selection is this idea that all species actually do produce more offspring than can actually survive. You see that in the seeds of a green pepper or the seeds of a dandelion or the eggs in the ovary of a woman or in this case this is some insect eggs. So one insect was trying to replace itself and instead of laying one egg it laid about three, oh, a couple dozen there. Yep. And that was just one spot. In the hopes that at least there will be one survivor to carry on the species. A variation is an, any difference between members of the same species. You might think that all these dogs might belong to the, a different species, but no, they're all uh, part of just the, do the, the dog species, Canis familiaris, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so any of these dogs could mate with each other. You know, one have to be one male and one female, but they, any of these dogs could create puppies together. And they all have their great variation between the one dog to the next. Competition. Now, competition is the idea that members of the same species must compete for space, food, excuse me, and other resources with one another in order to survive. Now you think, well maybe these birds are competing with the prairie dog, but really that crowd of birds, they found a, a poor little prairie dog that's just sitting there eating its, eating its food, maybe a peanut or something, and maybe it's dropping some crumbs. Some birds have even gone about the business of trying to take that seed right out of the prairie dog's mouth. So they're competing with each other for that. They're also competing with the prairie dog for the, that piece of food. Competition is one of the things that affects DNA or chromosomes and in this image in the background here we've got some um, DNA that uh, before is on the left and on the right hand side you can see where there's a change, a mutation that occurred in this section of DNA. Sometimes a mutation can be harmful, sometimes helpful, sometimes no effect at all on the organism that has this DNA. Mm -hmm. Homologous structures, we've already unpacked that root word. Homo means same. And so when we're talking about homologous structures, we're looking at structures within related species that are similar. Um, and those similarities lead us to um, conclude that perhaps they've come from a common ancestor. So if you look at all of these different primates in the background of the slide, you can see a, quite a number of homologous structures. Boy, looking I'm looking at, at, the, at the hand structure, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the structure of the arm, the structure of the leg. The rib cage. The rib cage for sure, and, and, and the skulls too. Yeah, lots of homologous 
structures. And a fossil, you may have been fossil digging sometime. Maybe you've been to the Science Museum and seen some of the great fossils. Fossils are just preserved remains or traces of an organism that lived in the past. And fortunately, we are able to uh, do some excavating of the earth and find things that are <clears throat> that lived long ago that don't that don't live on the earth any longer. So, uh, when people started finding fossils, they really started asking questions: Where did they come from, and what are they related to? What do you think this one is related to, with that long tail and sort of hand-like paws mm -hmm. on the front? Hmm. I have to think about that. Oh my. <laughs> This term, hominid, might be something that's new to most seventh graders. And really, hominid simply refers to any type of primate that is bipedal. That means it walks upright on two legs. Bi means two, and yep. ped means foot Peter leg. So yep. good. Yep. So bipedal, they have relatively longer lower limbs. So in us, our legs are longer, relatively speaking, than our arms would be. And the lack of a tail, so no tail. Really, it's all humans and human-like ancestors that fall under this term hominid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then oh, evolution. To wrap things up, all of this falls under our unit on evolution. And really, evolution is simply the process of change over many generations that sometimes creates a new species. And it's important that we emphasize that this is gradual change in a species over time. Over how much time? A lot of time. Like and millions and it, of years. It does depend on the species, though, of course. Like an insect that reproduces every several days oh, sure. could evolve much more quickly, even within a, a um, season mm -hmm. of um, a calendar, mm -hmm. than, of course, a human would not yeah. evolve as quickly. So we hope that you uh, have been able to understand the vocabulary that goes along with with uh, the evolution unit, and we want to make sure that you know all these words. Uh, they will be on the summative, and we'll be using them all during this unit. If you did not understand these words, we encourage you to watch this uh, video one more time, and um, and we'll be having a quiz on this in class. Thanks for listening.